We are many. Those that live beyond the veil of darkness where nightmares are born. Sanity knows no bounds and ends thrives on the suffering of the dead. Rides in the solace in the souls of the weak. We have taken refuge here among the mortals in hope of harvest for my innocence. Tread lightly in the search for the voices and stories of the departed. For in shadow hides the evil that lurks within. As the light dies and slowly becomes night, the realm of spirits rule the world. In the darkness of your mind hides your own hidden demons and brings to life your deepest fear. Do you have what it takes to speak to the dead? Do you accept your own mortality in the search for life after life? Have you ever seen a ghost, spirit, or demon? Have the lights flickered and the room became as cold as death itself? Maybe you have. Maybe it was your own subconscious preparing you for death. Come spend some of what's left of your own existence in our search for the answers that are hidden behind the veil. Shed off the blinders and open your mind's eye and listen to their stories. We are there. We are incarnate paranormal. And what is up, everybody? How y'all doing? Happy uh, Sunday to you. Yeah, it's been a good day. Uh, Raiders lost, Broncos lost, Chiefs won. Been a great day for football. <laughs> Can't really say anything against that. And that's uh, for the Raiders and Broncos fans out there. <laughs> But anyways, uh, guys, last night we left off. We didn't get, unfortunately, we didn't get any EVPs last night. We went almost two hours and bupkis. <laughs> it happens. And tonight, I'm not really expecting much either. Uh, figured get on, get through this recorder as much as we can. We got, we're an hour through section two. Uh, section three is about half as long, I think. So we're going to try to get through MDS night one, then move on to, well, something else. Don't know yet. Haven't decided what we're going to analyze next. Uh, probably, well, I don't know. I'll figure it out when the time comes. But we are actually, what, 30, 33 EVPs in, and we're still on, well, night one, halfway through the second recorder. We're, we are on a, we're on a good path. We're on a great path, so let's uh, see what we can get started, see what we can get analyzed, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can get something tonight. Get your cool drink, com comfortable place to sit, headphones, and yeah, let's do it. am I doing? Let's get to the analyzing screen. God, am I a moron. <laughs> hey, how you guys can even see anything seeing my ugly mug up there? I'm sitting there worried about getting something to drink and I didn't even switch scenes. Who would have thunk that one? We're just starting off early, ain't we? And if you notice, I got up, 
I managed to get uh, Floyd Burton Loveless's picture up here. I forgot to put him in with all the others. I'm just kind of starting to crowd myself now over the microphone. If we put any more up, I'm going to have to uh, get a bigger screen. <laughs> Go back at a wider angle just to get more shit on here. think that we might do one of Dead's recorders next. Yeah. And one was in culinary. I don't even remember where he left him. I'd have to go back to the recorders and look. Just finished watching 1883 and <laughs> time for the new epis new season of Yellowstone. Uh, Yellowstone is kind of like uh, Game of Thrones for not Game of yeah Game of Thrones. I haven't seen an episode of anything. <laughs> I don't think I could get into another TV show. Maybe one day. Like Sons of Anarchy, but in the country. Oh my God! <laughs> uh, I never. I think I've seen one episode of Sons of Anarchy. I think I've seen maybe two episodes of, well, oh, <laughs> other TV shows that were so popular, and I just couldn't get good into them. I just couldn't do it. But, let's see, where are we at? We're probably not going to have much on this recorder. Might get something in there. Yeah, we're in for... We're in for about two hours of peace and quiet right here. I might have to watch a couple episodes just just to say I did, but
nothing but cell doors shutting up here. We're getting kind of used to that one. And Explicit's here. Hmm. How you doing tonight, Explicit? Before she said anything. Eh, chat's been real good lately. Chatbots are actually catching people when they walk in. So yeah, I can actually say hi before uh, before they do. Interesting concept, ain't it? And good news, uh, Deads, uh, <laughs> becoming the door greeter at Walmart. Welcome to Walmart. Get your shit and get out. Wait, in this case, it'd be get your EVPs and get out. Uh, our friends at Nevada State Prison are watching the, uh, watching the shows off YouTube. So yeah, special thank you to them for for tuning in. Now we just need to get Chris to talking talk him into watching live. They all need to create a Twitch account, come in walk come in and watch live, and help analyze. Let them identify something live. Yeah, explicit. And yeah, if you're just lurking, that's fine. You're here. If you're too blah to socialize, we've all been there. We have all been there and. It's all good. It's almost uh, too blah to do a show, but it's like, you know what? It's been a good day. It has been a really good day, so why not, right? Kind of pre-making up for next week like I said if all goes to plan Friday and Saturday uh, I have to go in and do two midnight runs so Friday there definitely won't be a show Saturday night ain't looking good either so hopefully again uh, maybe Sunday depending on how tired I am I just don't like this midnight shit it's it is what it is. Sounds like somebody hammering. Ah, that's not paranormal. <laughs>
This might be a loud one. I don't know. Now, a lot of these, uh, I don't want to say bumping sounds. If I remember right, this is one of the buildings we debunked it in. Uh, the rotunda, the dome over the rotunda. Uh, as soon as you walk in, uh, like wind or anything hits it, you get some weird, weird bumping noises. So a lot of these we are able to explain. Down in the main building, different story. Up here in the cell blocks, I'm curious how many of these are residual and how, how many of them are environmental because of the, ro the dome over the rotunda. So this is kind of why I want, I really want Chris, Chris and, uh, Susan in here to help analyze this so they can hear it and say definitively this is paranormal this isn't paranormal Brent you're just hearing things very possible too But I'm thinking next year for maybe September for the, for the next investigation. So we'll see. October, I don't know. Uh, maybe beginning of October. But... They're talking about Halloween events at the prison next year. And I don't want to step on their toes for that. But like I said, doing a anniversary, on the anniversary of the executions, I've been reading these, uh, reading the, the dates. You know, we've got February, April, May, June, July. July's still kind of early. November's too late. Uh, they've got a lot of snow up there right now. August. August is starting getting into the season when we're going to start looking at. But I know, uh, I know Dead's has got a... Uh, no, it, it started snowing like two days after we left. They started getting snow, should I say. Uh, I don't want to interfere with Dez's hunting season. Uh, I know it goes to August in the beginning of September, I think. Uh, so, end of September into October. Oh, I could too. Uh, we got September 8th. Whoa, shit. We might do September 8th. That September 8th might be the option. Uh, why do I say that? Hold on. Uh. Where are we at here? There we are. September 8th is the anniversary of John Hancock. So to be the f to be the first to be hung at Nevada State Prison and do that on the anniversary of his death, since he is one of the pictures hanging right behind me, actually right there. So that that might be an option. Let me write this down. Because I know I'm probably going to go up two or three times next year. Uh, I know Susan wants me to come up and give, give a speech, maybe. Uh, or at least uh, work with a couple other groups. I'm, which I'm, I'm still working with her on. Nothing's in definitive yet, but it's in the works. Uh, November, 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 December. A lot of... Uh, oh, the November 17th was, was a triple hanging. So that's out of the question.
can somebody do me a favor and see when September 8th is next year? That's July, February, August, uh, December. December 6th would be way too freaking cold. And that'd be uh, Edward Carroll Cole. September 8th is a Friday. Yes. So I'm going to talk to Susan about doing Thursday, Friday, Saturday again next year. The 7th, the 8th, and the 9th. I think that's what we're going to do. Anniversary of John Hancock. Get the girlfriend to come down with the like she's kind of curious about that in Virginia City. Uh, Virginia City won't be in any investigations because what's his face quit the Washoe. That's a paranormal horn. That's a ghost horn. Or as MDS might put it, that might be a ghost blowy right there. <laughs> At least it's something to listen to besides static. So the the goal for next year is going to be September eight seventh eighth and ninth. I think Susan would get a kick out of that one. Because I think she said, she said, like, John Hancock's her favorite. Yeah, I deads, bring her, let her investigate, too. Get her, get her a recorder to carry around. And we'll set her in culinary by herself. <laughs> we'll set her up in women's with Susan. We'll set her, set her up with the girls into, into women's and see what they can get. Because I know Sarah wants to go. I know Sims wants to go. Uh, Vexus, maybe. You, definitely. Uh, and a couple other people. So, yeah, we're going to try to try to make that trip possible. It'd be a hell of a trip. You're right, because he would. We'd leave him up in, uh, leave him alone up in Pitney's cell for about an hour. Just leave him alone with Pitney. If we can get, if they're not gonna, if the prison's not gonna take over the cell blocks again. You didn't scream like a little girl, but. That that couple of times that look on your face, that that oh shit look, that that eyebrow raise was like, did did I just hear that? That intrigue look, not necessarily that shock look, but it's like. Brent wasn't joking. <laughs> Pulled the Spock more than anything else, yeah. It it. Especially walking out of the uh, walking out of twelve, and we heard "Don't go." That I think that was on night one too. I'm almost positive that was on night one. And I'd never heard anything like that. So that the fact we were hearing EVPs with a naked ear. And that I, you don't get that. Uh, excuse me. You don't get that very often. I can count on one hand 
how many times I've heard EVPs with the naked ear before this trip, before this investigation. And I could quadruple it just for what we heard on night one. I can't explain it. Yeah. Susan and Chris is making me feel like family and I'm forever grateful for that. That it, it, it's humbling. When you try to do something right in this field and people take note. But my third investigation to the prison, Chris and Susan, I've, you know, they're the previous two and well, Chris number two uh, being there this time and immediately, you know, it falls in like one of them square pegs. It just, it, it, it was a, it just felt, it felt right this time. There's a diff there was a different energy about the prison than the past two investigations. You walk in, it's like, it, I don't want to say it like, it's like walking into somebody's house back home. And it's just like, okay, Brent, you're here. Well, you're here to visit with us. And that, that is, it's a strange, strange thing. Walking into a haunted location like that, a prison, and the spirits make it feel like it's home. But as Susan said, and Chris, hey, that was loud. But as Susan and Chris said that you're the only one that sits down and talks to them like they're people. You don't go in and antagonize, provoke, and try to rile up bad memories. You, you, you're, just, you're just normal with them. And I think that's what they miss the most about physical life. Is somebody just sitting down and giving a few minutes? Maybe they wouldn't have been in the situation they were in had somebody sat down and take the, taken those extra few minutes. Maybe I'm giving them that eternal peace that they're looking for. There is one person out there that's not going to judge me for my crimes, but talk to me as a man. Maybe that's what they were missing. Because God knows they probably didn't talk to him when they were on death row. I don't know how the guards treated him. Okay, that's shuffling. Yeah, we can't count this. I'm willing to bet the guard just one of them sit down in the cells and shut up. <sighs> Quite possible. But I'm willing to bet some of the guards actually talk to him too because they ain't got left, nothing left in this life. The guard checks on him. Do you need anything? Is there anything I can do for you? You know, that extra step of kindness. And I'm willing to bet about half the guards would do that and half would be like, just go in there and be quiet. I don't need anything out of you. But that'd be something to ask the guards. It's, yeah, it's like you get the ones that treat them like they're rats in a cage. And the guard's like, I get to go home every night, you're here. And then you get the other guy, guard's like, hey guys, can I bring you some envelopes and some paper to write your family? You know, can I bring you a book? Can I... Can I do anything for you to help make it easier on you? Can I make, can I do anything to make this easier? I can't just open the door and let you go, but I can make your last, you know, few months here comfortable. What can I do that won't get me in trouble? I'm sure, uh, you're right, Dads. I'm sure the prisoners were grateful for that. 
there's somebody out there that actually gave a shit. And you saw where I've come from my first investigation to this one. You know, and the fact that Joe and Chris were both, you know, prison guards. And, well, Joe, Chris, and Chris, all three were prison guards. It's it's weird that two of them, you know, they worked at Nevada State Prison. Well, uh, I, I don't know. I, th I know Susan's there quite often. I know they do day tours quite often. I know the, the day crew does day tours a lot. I know Susan, Chris, and Chris, and Joe, they go in and do maintenance and clean up and all this. And I th I'm pretty sure it's like whenever there's not anything scheduled, I, I'm imagine one of them's there at least every day if they can. I know Susan's got the horses in a home life. Uh, Chris and Chris both have jobs. So two or three times a week maybe. I don't want to speculate, but if they're watching this later on YouTube, I'd, I'd be curious how many, times a, how many times a week are you physically at the prison when there is not an investigation going on? Please shoot me a message on that. No, I mean, I, I've wondered it too. I see them, I see Susan posting on Facebook all the time. You know, you know, I'm here cleaning or I'm here saying hi to my friends, saying hi to the spirits. So I know they go in and clean and they'll, they'll talk to the spirits like I'm talking to you guys. Which is, I think it's a good thing. I'd, do, I'd be doing the same thing if I lived up there. I'd be going in whenever I could to clean, tidy up, and just talk to them. Just yeah, I'm gonna go mop one of the one of the cell blocks down. Hey guys, don't worry, I'm just here tidying up for you. Is there anything I can do for you? And do some live EVP sessions while I'm cleaning. Just headphones on with the recorder and just see what we can get. And I'm pretty sure one, at least one of those spirits would be like, hey, you missed a spot. If you don't like it, get out here and do it your transparent self. Because I know all the do the docents do a lot for the prison. And I'm pretty sure they do a lot of their own po out of their own pocket too, which is amazing. I just hope they can get the floor fixed up there in the infirmary. Hopefully that's not going to be a major problem to keep people from investigating that area. That was, they did say it was, uh, I think they said it was over a tunnel. So there's a lot of earth in between it. So it might just be a surface crack.
which I'm, I'm fairly sure that's what it is. I don't think it's a structural issue. You know, we noticed it on day three. And we really didn't investigate the infirmary this time. We just had the recorders up there. But like I said, it's like I said before we went up there, there is a lot of ground to cover. Even three nights isn't a lot of time. You'd almost need a full week to investigate the prison and do it right. Yes, the problem is it's women's. It's the women's cells. So you send women up there, you're going to get activity. Unless you get a man up there, you might have had women that killed their husbands, and you're going to get that negative activity, but having women investigate the women's area, it's always going to be active, in my personal opinion. That's like next time, if, if we have access to 6 through 13, I am going to find something that looks like some heroin, and I'm going to take it up into Pitney's cell and leave it with a with a syringe without the needle in it. I'm just going to take it up there and leave it in his cell and do an EVP session. Maybe get a spoon, a needle, or a, an empty syringe, of course, without the needle, something that looks like heroin, and leave it up there right next to a, the happy birthday mom card. And just kind of see what kind of evidence we get. I'm anxious to see what we got with the jokes we made. And the, the trying to throw out spoilers and tease people to come in to watch the show. It's like, yeah, it's going to be, it's night three. We got a long way to go to get to that. Now, I'm not jumping around. I'll, I'll make a deal with anybody if you want to hear something from a future day beyond day one there's a tip jar I don't want to skip around I want to do it in order that way you guys see what we got uh uh here, here's some uh, deads. We did lose some video. We did lose a little bit of video from night three. Not very much. Uh, you remember when my GoPro just flat out froze coming out of 12 when we were going down to six? Uh, it bumped a couple files. And for those one, wanting to know, uh, we, we got through investigating Neil Pitney's cell, and we were poking the bear. I'm not going to even joke. We weren't provoking, but we were poking the bear. Uh, as soon as I walked out, uh, we ended up getting down to six, doing a full investigation, uh, or at least a partial investigation. And I looked down, and the timer on my GoPro was frozen. It's like, wait a minute, I'm hitting pause, I'm hitting stop, I'm hitting power, everything. I literally had to take the battery out of the GoPro and restart the recordings. Now, the research I did was either, uh, it hit. I have a corrupt memory card, or it overheated, which I don't know why it overheated. I ran it seven hours each night. I had it on about about five and a half to six hours each night. So it might have been a memory card issue or Neil Pitney didn't like what I was saying. And again, that's him in the bottom left. That's Mr. Mr. Mom Killer himself.
and that's why uh, I'm gonna get a couple more GoPros. Uh, I'm gonna get at least two more with two more gimbals and two more light mods. Uh, that way we can get that six to seven hours battery life of recording in static locations. Which I think would be, I think it'd be all right. Because I don't think you guys will mind watching, hold on, see what this is. All right, just a car. Uh, I don't think anybody would mind just watching uh, video from a static camera if it meant catching a full body apparition. Even if it's like five hours to just focus on one thing. And I think we're gonna either get something in women's uh, execution area, uh, Max, uh, Neil Pitney's area, or uh, N9 where the guy hung himself. There's five areas we can get activity, definitely on video. And I'm anticipating something from at least death row on dead static camera. We ain't found shit! And there is Corgi. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. How have you been? It's good, man. It's been a while. nothing <coughs> excuse me busier than a long tail cat in a room full of rocking chairs believe me I understand <laughs> work has been insane plus you've been addicted to Final Fantasy 14 oh my god you're taken after deads And kind of, I've been, uh, uh, I'm doing weekend streams right now because next week, uh, Friday and Saturday, I got runs to do. I've got midnight runs to do. So I, f I feel you on the work. I've been just insanely busy, which is good. That means overtime. Uh, and more gear. <laughs> Definitely more gear to get. But I, I think we're, I think we're done getting audio. At least I get overtime, and it's been getting. I could get a lot of overtime if I wanted, but I don't want to work my life away. But I think if I cranked away for about three months on overtime, I could get my new desk, my laptop, and the and the GoPros, and then I'd be just making sure I saved up for the next investigation, which we're gonna aim for. Uh, September of next year. I get plenty of OT. I told Brent's like mainly because they don't have any brains. Oh, yeah. Uh, thing is, uh, 
the people I work with in the office have brains. It's the people out in the field that forget to get something when they when we transport everything to them. Then you get back to the shop and like, oh, we forgot this. We need it now. So, yeah, I feel you. That nail ball kinds of stupid shit from work. I was trying to check into the hotel. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Trying to cause a crisis while you're on vacation. That's when you kind of just take your phone and put it to silent. You're like, I told you I was going out of town. You're going to have to function without me for three days. Corgi, you don't get you don't get vacation? What the hey? Well, I'm glad you stopped in to at least spend a few few minutes in here. <laughs> you get them, you just can't take them. I remember those days, back when I was towing. Like, yeah, you got vacation time, but we need you. But you've got drivers to, you've got drivers to cover. Well, we're gonna fire one of them. Okay. A lot of places you can't accrue it, which sucks. I go three years without a vacation time and I still got two weeks. So either I'll use it or lose it. In two weeks now, you'll be at three weeks next year. Nice. Have to leave 40 hours though. Yeah. God, when I left uh, Habitat, I had 200 hours of vacation. Uh, when I had towing, I had almost a month. Uh, I had over a month, I take that back. Wait a little while, then I'm gonna go to that freaking Remember next year that real ID shit kicks in. So I got to go get the freaking real ID. I need to get mine. Uh, and I'm going to do that, that fucking pre-check. I'm not going to go through, go through what we went through there in, uh, in Carson. We need to we need to pat you down. You need to step over here. You you, you know the the uh, the scanner pop positive on something. Yeah, I got frisk. Guys, like I might have to touch your junk. I'm like, take all you want. <laughs> it's like I even said that to him. I'm like, just take all you want. I'll stand right here. I'll just keep my hands up while you pat me down. <laughs> the look on his face that was great. It's like, oh, come on, guys. Just. Harassing for the paper. I didn't even have anything in my pockets. Well, what do you got in your pockets? Nothing. Well, it's showing. Then pat me down. It's not my fault your scanners are pieces of crap. Intel designed the software that blanks out people's junk. It's like, well. <laughs> Which is why it doesn't work. Ooh, them's fighting words.
So I might uh, be getting some dirty looks from you guys on this. Uh, I figured out, I think I decided on my neck, on my laptop. Uh, will I regret it if I get the Dell G15? Okay, maybe I won't get the Dell G15. Because <laughs> Dell. I was looking at Asus Tough as was the other choice. And that's only about $200 more. So, just going to wait till Black Friday. I'll never use Apple. I'll never use Apple. I don't like them. I think it's hot garbage. Yeah, Black Friday is in like two, what, two weeks? Yeah, like two weeks. Basically what I need is I need a I need a solid laptop to run Adobe. To run Adobe Audition and maybe a couple of games while I'm on the road. But you need you need Okay. Another door slam. Something pretty solid to run Adobe. Especially this. But I figure twelve to fifteen hundred is a good budget, so you're a little pissed at Sony. Why is that, Corgi? Post the other one up here and see what you guys think of it. Let me see if I can find it. didn't get a game code in the box ouch and this is the other this is the other laptop I was looking at and they probably pulled that while supplies last well I bought it while the supplies last it just didn't have the code in it so uh, where's my code you sons of well you know what I was gonna say
steel book case. Dang, sounds sounds like it was a uh, a manufactured glitch to where the boxing's done. <laughs> Somebody opens up the box and they've got like twenty freaking codes. Be like, wait a minute. Why do I have so many codes in here? They're just grabbing the codes for themselves. That's why you can't get a lot of special editions. It's like, oh, they, they, all the employees took them. That's why you get like these Halo bundles with the freaking Master Chief's helmet you find on eBay for $2,000. One of the employees nabbed it and, uh, yeah. Not saying that shit happens, but it might. Wow, two seventy for a game and whew, ouch. That's pretty much that right there. Your collector's edition in the game, and that's sitting right here in my hand. What they'll probably do is ask you for the uh, the product code on the back, uh, see how many people filed the claim, how many other people have filed saying it was missing, uh, and compare it to what run of products were missing it based on how many people reported it if it was in the same area. So if they said, oh yeah, we had 30 people in your area reported it missing, they're going to be like, yeah, okay, here you go. We're going to make it right. If you're the only one, they're going to be like, eh. And you just got to keep pushing their buttons until they do it. Sony's customer support sucks. Yes, it does. Reminds me of Shins. I pay a top tier collector's edition for that game. That's a lot like XCOM. Don't even know what game that is. We're really not getting any freaking evidence tonight. I'm really surprised. Last year, this cell block was active. No, Corgi, you didn't jinx us. Uh, we didn't. We're like, we're an out. We're two hours into this section of the recorder. We finished up the three hours last night. Uh, we went. About 50 minutes last night. Uh, finishing up the last section of the recorder. And an hour and five minutes of this section. So, yeah, this, this might be one of those dead recorders. Where we're not going to get anything. Well, I take it back. We've gotten... We've gotten four EVPs. 
yeah, shit happens. You're exactly right. And I, I'm anticipating at least out of the 19 recorders we had between us, uh, the ones that were set down and left, I anticipate two a night maybe that aren't going to have much evidence. Maybe three. That's part of part of the paranormal. But we we still have to we're gonna beat last year's EVPs by a bunch. Were they one in the USS New Jersey? Okay. I think that's an older episode. Matter of fact I'm positive that's an old episode. Yeah, they've they've done uh a lot of battleships, they've done the USS Constitution, I think it is. They've done a few of them, and it's like, mm, boats make a special kind of noise. How much of that was paranormal, and how much of that was explainable? Ooh, did you hear that creaking sound? Yeah, that's called the hull. But yeah, they do these historical ships... It's cool for his, for a historical standpoint. Beyond that, it's like, all right. Not on my list, but it's cool. I want to go to Waverly Hills next year, and I want to do a couple other, maybe a couple other prisons, if I can. But Nevada State Prison takes precedent. Corgi, we'll see what happens, man. Uh, a lot of those state pens back back in your area, you know, they're, they're haunted as hell. Problem is, going to these these size of prisons, you need two or three nights. And it all comes down to what they're charging to go in. And they're going to be like, okay, 100, 100 a night per person, Okay, 150 a night per person. Okay, I can do that. Once you start getting two and three hundred dollars a night per person, or they want, you know, they want twenty five hundred dollars for ten people. It's like okay, that's two hundred and fifty a person. It's like that. That's a ripoff. A lot of places are doing that just because the location was on TV. And I don't like that. I don't like people exploiting the field to make a buck. Like what? Uh, Brushy Mountain I'd like to get to. Uh, there's one in Pennsylvania I want to get to. Uh, a couple in West Virginia. I want to do Bobby Mackey's in West Virginia for sure. Uh, beyond that. But they don't jack up the prices because of it anymore. That's good to hear. The fact they want to get people in here is a saving grace. They keep history alive by, one, keeping it fair. Oh, and that's a whole nother level of crazy is mental hospitals. State hospitals and, oh yeah. You're asking for some craziness. 
especially at these, I, how do I put this, PC, mentally ill patients went mad and did something crazy. The activity is going to be through the roof. That residual energy alone is worth going for. One, it never hurts to ask. Uh, two, if they don't, uh, would you be willing to? I've, I've done this on locations. Uh, have you ever let any paranormal teams in? No. Would you be willing to? Well, I don't know. What if I could tell you I could get you 10 people and we'll pay 100, 100, 100 a head for five or six hours? Usually people will be like, all right, you're, why would you pay? You're good enough, good enough to let us in. We're good enough to make a donation to the location to help keep it up. Not even sure if the building's still there. Generally, even if it's, I don't want to say dilapidated, as long as it's in a semi-safe state, uh, people are okay with it as long as you ask and offer to make a donation. They're perfectly okay with it. hell is that no that's weird okay let me uh, really bump this up then clean it up grave creek never heard of that Okay, reverb ain't gonna do it. Okay, nothing there. Uh, I've done Native American they're very tough to do. As uh, long as you're respectful, as long as you're there for the right reasons, you're okay. Uh, a lot of people refuse to do it, and I understand, because if you do something wrong, you're, you're, you're on a whole nother level of just crazy. Because if you don't know how to, how to deal with I don't want to say Native American curses, but their energies, it, it's going to be tough. And you don't want to take that chance. completely respectable. They believe that, yeah, in different gods. They believe in earth. They believe in Mother Nature. They believe, you know, and all that. It's, and it will drive you crazy. <laughs> You're right. You like your sanity. Probably best not to do of it what little of it you have you're in this stream watching you probably don't have much left then again what's that say about me I lost my sanity years ago that's the price of being in the paranormal you give up a lot of it
Got about an hour left on this section. But Native American stuff, no thanks. Heard way too many stories. I've experienced it uh, on both levels. Uh, I've talked about, I've, I did a residential years ago out in Pahrump, Nevada. I had uh, got an hour remaining on this section. <laughs> Remember, it breaks it up into every, every three hours, it breaks it up into a new file so uh, it doesn't corrupt. And I, I think that's great. It makes it a pain in the butt with GoPro. Visit it like every nine minutes, it breaks it up into a new section. Uh, but as I was saying, I did a, did a residential out in Pahrump, Nevada. Uh, we had to go to this house like seven times. We did a cleansing six times. We kept telling the lady, this is not the spirit of your husband. His, his energy is passed on. Uh, first couple times it might have been, but we kept we kept having a friend come out. Do he was a demonologist. Uh, he was certified, and he kept he'd come out and just cleanse it every time for us. Go around the outside with the holy water, you know, blessing inside and out. And finally, he's like, "I'm not. I can't come back out here. This is too much. We don't charge anything." Uh, it wasn't demon. It was. It was a actually a very calm Native American spirit. Uh, the last the last investigation, when he did the cleansing, he told her we're not coming back, and we had to explain. You know, for the last time, this is not the spirit of your husband. We're gonna get rid of it, and you need to accept it. And we had to be. I don't say crude about it. But I was out in the backyard doing an EVP session, and when I was analyzing it, I wish I had still had the hard drive crash and I lost everything. Uh, had Native American singing, and it was like, okay. So I sent it to a friend who was Navajo. He took it out to his uncle, and he heard it, and it was actually not singing. It was like a. Uh, Native American uh, blessing uh, prayer, Native American blessing to me. Evident, whatever spirits were, Native American spirits were there, knew why we were there to protect her home and actually gave me a spiritual blessing from the other side. It was one of the coolest things, things in the world after my buddy told me that. It was a good, that spirit in that part of the house was good. But the other two spirits that were like in the kitchen, living room, bedroom area of the house were assholes. They were negative spirits. They were truly negative. And we were able to get rid of them. Thank God. I still uh, talk to her daughter and her son-in-law. Every now and then I'll just get a message from them and I'll be like, oh, how's your mom doing? Oh, she's good. She's good. No activity in the house whatsoever. But you'd walk into this house, and you'd literally see, if you turn, you could actually see the air swirling. You turn off the pitch black, and you're sitting there, and you can see almost like a vortex in the air forming in pitch black. It was one of the freakiest things in the world. But after we got it cleansed, it was like, okay, we don't have to come back, but... Getting that Native American. There was that crazy thing in the theater that. Yes. Yes. But, you know, it's dealing with Native American spirits, as long as you're calm. As long as you're peaceful, they're they're gonna sense that. Uh, yeah, mind you, I was only maybe three year, three or four years into the field when I saw this, so I'm still pretty much a green. I'm still a greenhorn. I still think I'm somewhat of a greenhorn in the in the field. There's still a lot that I don't know. 
but I actually do I still have do I still have that stuff hold on bear with me guys I I might have a couple of the EVPs saved. I don't know. I'll have to check. But, like I said, it's seven investigations to one house. And it, the, the house was like, what, 2,500 2, square feet? So, you figure not a huge house. But the fact you have to drive an hour and a half, seven times, just to investigate to help a client, is tough. Well, that's an hour and a half one way. And by the time you uh, finish, you're so tired to drive home, it's like, can I just pull off the side of the road and go to sleep? It's... Where the heck were these people? They were in Pahrump. They were, they were in Pahrump. From where I live, it's like an hour and a half drive. Cause I'm on the east side of Vegas. And you gotta go all the way up, uh, all the way up through uh, over the pass, then drop down. It sucks. But the longest I've ever driven for a residential was eight and a half hours. Head crash. When you're <laughs> When you investigate for four or five hours, and then you got to drive, yeah, <laughs> head crash. You're 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 not far off though. Hold on. Almost sounds like there's a voice there. Let's find out. Oh. What happened? <laughs> you you walk in the other room and see a shadow standing right in front of you. you wake up at two in the morning to take a leak, and all of a sudden you stand, go into the bathroom, and there's something standing right there. I make that joke because it's happened to me a few times. Hey Sarah, how you doing this evening? Okay, there might be a voice there. Uh, way down otherwise it's going to be loud no no voice you want to go visit your mom and dad a few weeks back do you see something standing on the side of the highway oh you pulled into a cemetery Ooh. 
So Sarah, we're uh, I'm going to talk to Susan hopefully tomorrow. Uh, we're going to aim for uh, the end of the first week of September for next for next year. Uh, September 7th, 8th, and 9th is what I'm going to aim for. So I'll definitely keep you guys informed on that one. Asked me to move my car, so move it. The thing won't start when I try to turn it. Which it sound like my dad saying, "No, no, no, no," over and over. Wow. Corgi, that's uh, that's that's creepy as shit. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> when to start your car? It sound like your dad saying, "No." Oof. Damn. So, Sarah, the reason uh, I'm doing that, it'll be the anniversary of this man's execution. <laughs> really, Dad? Not right now? Started right up. Ooh. That... That may that does make it even creepier. It's like your dad's like, uh uh. Dad really? Okay, you can go. It's, it's little hints like that, though. It does let you know that that they're always family is always around you. You took the Mustang that was nice, and it used to be his car. Oh yeah, that's him watching over you for sure. That's like saying, now you, "What are you doing driving this car, you little shit?" You know, I wouldn't let you drive this car if I was around. There, that too. Delayed you a little bit to prevent something from happening. That's <laughs> that's the others. That's the flip side of the coin right there. That's a cool side of the pillow. But it's like it might be that. What are you doing driving this? You know better than that. Uh, David, we haven't got, we've got nothing tonight. Basically, we ain't found shit. This is one of those recorders to where we're not probably going to get anything. That's definitely another door lock for sure. But, you know, this is, this is a downside of, Leaving recorders unattended, David. It's last year it paid off. Last year it royally paid off. Because we had four hundred and sixty nine EVPs. I'm in everybody's head, Corgi. I thought you knew. But we're we're gonna beat it. We got Twice as many recorders, five times the video. It's dark and scary in there, and I don't need another voice. I'm so scared. Or, 
one up, well, even better one. You're not afraid of the dark, are you? <laughs> was this from that top turret on the rotunda? Yes. And I've, I've actually been talking about that one, well, beginning of the show. Uh, it's picking out EVPs is so hard out of silence. I said last year, I, you can see, hold on. So you can see, oh, let me scroll up just there. And most of these are, these all but the uh, H3 VR are recorders that were left unattended. And we managed to get all of this. So this is all in two nights. We're we're gonna we're gonna do fine. It's just weeding through all this. The Red Queen from the first Resident Evil. Oh, that yeah. Still the creepiest child's voice is uh, is from Poltergeist, Carol Ann. They're here. It's like, oh yeah. Feel the hair on your aunt the hair on your arms stand up. You get the chills a little bit. It's like, okay. So David, how are you doing tonight? Doing good, tired, yeah, I feel you. Just trying to get all the rest I can for next weekend. Back to work tomorrow. Yeah. I <laughs> can be a long week next week. That's all I can tell you. Hopefully I can do a show each night, but Friday, Saturday, no show. Or the top golf over here for a friend's birthday. I still couldn't do any driving. That sucks. That's why you just need to go stick with miniature golf. It ain't going to bother your wrist too much. So I can guarantee there's nothing in here. So that is the rotunda. You hear that uh, that real faint rattle? That's what we were hearing when we were uh, actually investigating in these buildings to where, hey, that's a cell door shutting. Nope, it's the dome over the rotunda. The rotunda, the rotunda. Maybe one of those, these days I'll get it right. So it's building sounds. Not residual, not environmental, but
but structural. You got an urge to play Locker Hiding Simulator. Oh, aka Alien Isolation. I didn't even read Alien Isolation. I thought Locker Simulator was actually <laughs> like hide from your bullies. <laughs> Run down the halls of a high school and hide in a locker to get away from them. I definitely have issues. Play it in VR. If you play it in VR, you might want to stream it. That way we can play the jump scares. Oh, hell no. Oh, why not? Probably a good choice, Corgi. I don't trust y'all. You, you know us better than you think. Because it just... <laughs> Sounds like rubber-soled shoes on concrete floor. But I... But like, like Corgi said, that's like a hide in the locker simulator. That's... Not really much to the game. We are getting into some weird sounds, I'll say that. Well, you figure, uh, night one we started about 4.30 setting up. Uh, this recorder was probably set up about 4.45. Uh, we're three, five hours in, so it's about 8 o'clock at night. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know what that could be. This is crazy. One of the most active cell blocks. And we're getting nothing. Dude's more messed up in the head than the three of us combined. That's saying a lot. The three of us just tipped the scales. And that's no joke. Oh, 
it's okay with you guys though I'd uh kind of like to try to finish this section of the recorder tonight granted I don't think we're going to get any evidence I've been wrong before usually when I start complaining about not getting evidence is when we get it but we're going to finish out this section so we could start out uh tomorrow night on the last section of uh MDS recorder night one one EVP is all I want tonight I don't care if it's a get out I want one EVP you playing electrician sim I don't think I'd trust you playing operation What they need to do for the really gutsy people is find a way, take the old operation board, and hook it up to 220. Try to get the Adam's apple out hooked up to 220 with those little tweezers. <laughs> Think about that one. What's wrong with me coming up with something like that? No, I mean literally hook it up to an outlet. Shock you won't soon forget. You did it. You hooked it up to 220. Residual sounds. Yeah, 220 running part of the house was the hot tub. Okay. It was done by a certified master electrician. <laughs> Hurt like a bitch, you think? I said I was I was one of those kids. I always, I always used to walk up and grab the horse wire. And just be like, Then again, I wasn't too bright of a kid. Never peed on the electric fence, but I'd walk up and touch it. <laughs> Once. <laughs> I love, and any time you say anything, I know somebody who did that once it's like yeah th they got hurt you're just never right in the head after that after that once reminds me of the song with uh, the, the movie with uh, Michael Keaton Johnny Dangerously my sister kicked me in the balls once once.
<laughs> Your uncle did that once. <laughs> once. And that's all it takes. You never do it again after that. There's that one, there's a, there's a viral video out there on YouTube somewhere. I don't know where it went. Where the, a girl was out in the pasture and somebody dared her to put her butt on the electric fence. She did, but after she did it, she fell down and went face first into a uh, big old pile of cow dung. It's like, yeah, that'll, that'll teach you to put your butt on an electric fence. I said it was worse than grabbing it. Yeah. You're adding water to electricity. Yeah, not a good idea. Played a howling prank on an old girlfriend. She drop kicked me in the nuts wearing steel. Ooh. So that's why you're into the kinky stuff. People at work try to scare me every now and then. It's like, you do realize I go bumping through the dark looking for spirits. You think jumping out from one of the shelves is going to do anything to me? It's like, no. Steel toes are a whole different story. They don't give. At least with horses, it's just a... Getting kicked by a horse is like a tumbleweed. It's like... That's a quick snap. That's all it is, is a quick snap. Steel toes, it's like a follow through. It's like, oh my God. As soon as they fall out of my stomach, I'll be back with you. Oh, you mean when he spit out the walnuts? Yeah. Been there, done that, bought the book, had the t-shirt. Won't ever do it again. And that one's a little distant. Sounds like it's coming from the other side of the cell block. Definitely not paranormal.
So, Corgi, I do have to ask. Uh, what do you think about the pictures that I have up? You think that's a good addition to the investigation of analyzing the faces of all the people executed in Nevada State Prison? Or the majority of them? I don't have all the pictures. Uh, the ones behind me? Uh, let's start here. Uh, Jesse Bishop, first to be executed when they brought the uh, executions back to Nevada. Uh, Guy John, uh, first to be executed by lethal gas in Nevada. Uh, John Hancock, first to be hung. Uh, Carol Cole, Edward Carol Cole, first to die by le actual lethal injection. And Andreza Merkovic, uh, the only person to be executed by firing squad. The only one up here that's not that was not executed is the guy in the bottom left. This clown, Neil Pitney. On night three, when when we get into the investigations, I'll explain it some more. I don't know what to say. Think about that. It's more humane. So they say. I mean. Uh, you don't. Unless you're shot directly in the head. Uh, I don't know if you die instantly if you're shot in the heart. I think you're conscious for a few seconds. And you feel it. You heard what they do in China. Don't they have the uh, have a van that drives around and executes you? I think it's China. They have an execution van. Is that China or Japan that has the van? They execute the person charged the family of the ex executed for the cost of the bullet. Oh. Hopefully they're not executing more than a couple then. <laughs> one in the head, one in the heart. <laughs> that's, that's, that's dirty. That's, imagine if they did that here. Oh, by the way, here's the bill for 20 years of sitting on death row, and here's the bill for the execution. Could you imagine doing There'd be no more crime. You're like, hey, here's the bill for, for the death row for 10 years. Here's a $350,000 bill. I, 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 what was it back in the 90s it was like 40,000 a year per prisoner it's like my god $100,000 for life imprisonment here I'll, do, I'll donate the, the $1.25 for the round I'll don donate the $1.25 I think there's a lot of people out there that would too. I <laughs> sent him directly to the sun. You know how much that's going to cost to uh, put them on a rocket? 
You're talking a couple hundred million dollars. But I like the way you think on that one. Okay, ship them off to North Korea because they claim to have landed a person on the sun. Yeah, contract them to do it, then renege on the bill. I actually want to want to try VR. I haven't yet. I just have no urge, but maybe some of the paranormal games in VR would be cool. Talk about pucker factor. You ain't joking. Imagine the first Resident Evil in VR when that dog jumps through the window. Everybody remembers that hellhound jumping through the window. Yeah, I don't care who you were, you jumped out of your seat. Imagine that in VR. You didn't. Bullshit. Everybody did. That dog jumped through, everybody was like, just a quick, like, mm, what the hell? He said, nice doggy. And then the nice doggy ate your face. Again, that's probably from the rotunda.
If you clipped it on Twitch, I'm sure it is. All you got to do is go through your clips and, sh and scroll down. Some of the clips we've had are classic. There's no doubt about that. Might have to upload those to Discord or to uh, TikTok. Still can't believe I've had to go down that freaking rabbit hole. We need to get some evidence so I can clip for it. What game was that? <laughs> After you were dead. Division, yes. That was a while ago. And I think I still have that clip somewhere. <laughs> Tell me to do my That's Andre the Giant. I remember that. Oh, I remember that. Oops. See, that's got some more strength to it than the others. If you watch the the power signature, the the signal strength, this compared to that, a lot of different reasons. Yeah, it's a lot deeper tone. It's like somebody struck on something. It's an echo as opposed to somebody beating on something. So is that residual energy of somebody beating on their cell door? 
since these cell doors and the cell block are solid they're like bed solid steel bedroom doors so could that be you know residual of somebody just thumping on the door entirely possible but again nothing we can count as evidence we can't count every knock every thud uh, because it can be explainable So it's damn EVPs we're searching for. And we're going fishing for them tonight. Still going to pay for that one. i got to pay for a lot of stuff. I don't ever see it ending. Karma's going to bitch slap me one of these days for everything that I've ever done. But it's alright. Why? Because life is too short and it's going to be fun. Just hope I have a camera on when it happens. And it looks like we're going to have another one of those coming up. Oh, shit, I'm sitting in front of it. Right in there. Okay, there does sound like a whisper. I don't think it is, but we're going to try to find out. Uh, shit. <laughs> it's one of those ones when throughout a whole recorder, you're not using the filters very much. And when you do, you have to stop and be like, wait a minute, what was I doing? Am I doing the right ones now? That's going to be really fucking loud. Okay. I need to dumb that down a little bit. Okay. Let's go back in, do some noise reduction, see if that helps better. This might still be a little bit loud, so guard your ears. Okay. Uh, let's do this. Let's do it this way. This seemed to have worked the other day. Uh... Shit. Gonna have to do it again. Right. Capture noise point. Apply. Okay, this might do it. Let's find out. Okay, it's... We're not going to be able to get this one out, unfortunately. So, let's move along. It's one of those ones, no matter what you do to clean it up, the right filters, it ain't going to do it.
So unfortunately, uh, section one of this recorder, we got four EVPs. Section two, we're gonna hit the great big goose egg. Which I hate. I really hate that. And section three. And this is only 13 minutes. So we can knock out MDS night one tonight. Uh, let's just go ahead and get this out of the way, shall we? Uh, we're going to go in and go... Go with ten. Like I said, I apologize, guys. We can't make EVPs. <laughs> this this is terrible. I was actually expecting this to be one of the better ones. Again, you just never know. Life of a paranormal investigator sometimes is long and boring. You sit in front of a computer screen for hours and hours listening to audio to no avail. It's okay. At least I got an active chat tonight to help uh, help keep me entertained. Otherwise, I'd be smashing my head against the keyboard. So while we're listening for this, we have a decision to make. Which recorder do we want to tackle next? Uh, we've got, the Z we're not gonna do the Zoom H3 VR next. Uh, we've got explicit one, two, or three, uh, the Vexus recorder, the unknown recorder, uh, Tascam, uh, Milkweed, the uh, H4N Pro, uh, or Dead's recorder, or we have Dead's actual recorders that he had from the not from uh, that he that we had set throughout the prison. So, what do you guys think? Which recorder should we do next? Should we do the Dead Zoom H1, uh, the H4N Pro, one of your recorders? Okay, we can do that. Now I gotta remember which. I'm gonna have to go back onto the uh, 
under the hard drive and figure out which one was night one because I didn't mark that. Yeah, we'll start one of your recorders tomorrow night, for sure. Try to fo trying to follow these uh, little spikes in the spectrum. Most of them have been door slamming. And I think that's all they are. Yep. But Deads, what I think I'm going to do is uh, the recorders that we carried with us are going to be analyzed last. Uh, simple fact for night one, because of the responses we had in uh, execution viewing and for night three execution viewing, I'm not. I'm going to save the best for last on each night. Uh, so like I said, same with the video for everybody. Uh, this is your first time here. Uh, we're going to finish off all of night one audio before we get to night one video. Same for night two and night three. Uh, last year, I went through all the video first. And yeah, Dez is actually right. 100% spot on with this. You, people don't realize how much we walked around and just roamed the prison. We averaged over 10 miles a night. Three nights, we averaged over 10 miles a night. And I'm going to bring up the picture for you guys again. For those who haven't been here before, this is Nevada State Prison, Carson City, Nevada. You figure this bottom center door on the left hand side this is where we go in at the office is about 20 feet from here this is where we're set up this is home base from home base all the way up to this long building up at the top is 0.6 miles then you talk you're walking the entire grounds of this prison and we were going up and down to the top at least six times a night oh, about six or seven times let's be fair about that so even to 12 and 13 is 0. 0.6 miles you figure seven times 
that's a pretty good shot. So, the only buildings we did not go into, the chaplain's office, which is, well, we didn't go into this building, this big long white one, uh, the warehouse on the far right, the one just to the left of that is the book binding factory, we did have a recorder in there, uh, the chaplain's office, which is, uh, Right up here, like right next to what looks like a truck, which is a truck. So right there is Chaplin's office. And just a couple of those we just, one, two of them we didn't have access to. One of them I didn't get any activity last year. So I didn't even bother going in. Uh, and a couple of other areas we just had access to, like we didn't go in to investigate because of safety concerns. Uh, for those who were here for last year's uh, analyzation, I put a uh, recorder on the gate to the cave, which we thought was the original hole for uh, isolation, which actually was an old food storage cave. We put a recorder in there on night three. Night two, we had one in the original isolation uh, cell, where somebody spent like 20 some years. Uh, he was so violent they had to give him a lobotomy and kept him in a cave. And once we get to the video on night three, you'll see why. You'll, you'll see the cave. It's probably the size of uh, your, your, your master bedroom, if not smaller. Figure the, a master bedroom in an apartment, and that's how big the, the isolation cell was. So we, we covered some serious ground. And for the past two years I went before, previous to that, you can figure how much walking was actually done. But this year, far more intense investigating. More so than the previous two years. Previous two years I was still getting my feet wet. This was a solid, substantial investigation. Got into some very detailed questions. Got into some very, <laughs> very heavy moments to where you guys aren't going to be disappointed. Like I said, we're two recorders in on night one. We got a long way to go, ladies and gentlemen. And I anticipate a lot of this, a lot of quiet. Hopefully not in the hole, hopefully not in the cave, hopefully not in the book factory. But next, we're gauging this for next year too, to figure out what cell blocks we need to actually focus on. Execution for sure, culinary for sure, 12 for sure, 13, I don't think we had any activity. So I think this should be me coming in ending. So hold on. This is going to get really loud. So I want to bump this down just a hair. So I don't blow out eardrums. And that's going to get way too loud. So hold on. I will blow out eardrums on this one. Okay, there we go. Six hours, 26 minutes, 35 seconds. End building C9, night one. Okay, so you, you guys get the picture. Uh, over six hours of audio, one recorder. 
And unfortunately on that, we got four EVPs in six hours. Sims Recorder, uh, night one, up in uh, Execution Viewing, we had 33 EVPs. So you can see how much they vary building to building. It, it just goes all over the place. So we're probably going to be in store for that for most of the investigation. Uh, 12, I'm anticipating a lot. Uh, 11, quite possible, because on night three, we really, really provoked. Or should, should I say I provoked? Uh, Celsi 36, maybe. Uh, up in D block, uh, we had Dead's Recorder. That's where the blob and the guy was uh, hung or set on, the guy was set on fire. I take that back. Uh, infirmary, maybe. Six is going to be hit and miss. This is our first time in there. Eight or six, seven, seven, maybe. Uh, or eight. I take that back. Seven, we didn't go into. Eight, nine. Well, we just did nine. So there's so much to go through. I'm just trying to piece it all together in my mind. And it's <laughs> it's a lot, guys. It's really a lot. But I truly do thank you guys for tuning in for two and a half hours tonight. I did not anticipate to go this long. <laughs> but we did. We got through MDS Night 1 Recorder. Tomorrow night, we're going to start on one of Dead's Recorders. After the show, I'm going to go back through and figure out which one we're going to listen to. I don't want to do try to get one of the most active. Hopefully, we get one of the active ones, but it's going to be got the H3 VR and the H8, I think it is. And then he was carried the uh, Tascam Porta Capture with him, so we got we got some recorders to go through, and we're gonna have fun with it, guys. I truly thank you so much for tuning in tonight, even though it was lack of evidence, but we had an active chat and we had we had everybody in here tonight. You know, Explicit, Deads, Corgi, Sarah, uh, <laughs> David, and everybody else who just lurking in the shadows. It's all right. You guys are in here, and we're growing. We're really growing, and we're going to have fun with it. You guys are on the ground floor, and the family's getting bigger day by day. You guys have a great night. God bless. And I'll see you tomorrow night. Thanks again.